Have you ever wondered what your hip replacement is made out of? Well, it largely depends on whether you've had a cemented or uncemented hip replacement, or perhaps a combination of the two. That's a hybrid total hip replacement. In the United Kingdom, there's roughly equal amounts, just over a third each of cemented and uncemented implants. We ask a lot of the materials that make up a hip uh, joint replacement. They need to be strong enough to withstand five times our body weight, sometimes a lot more than that, over maybe one to three million steps that we take each and every year. The materials mustn't rust in salty human tissue. They can't be toxic to the human body. They need to be well fixed to bone so they don't rattle loose. And the, the moving part need to be hard enough and not wear out over the 10, 20, and even 30 years that we want our hip replacement to last. The first cemented Charlie hip replacements from the 1960s were made out of a, a stainless steel stem with a plastic cup held in place with an acrylic cement, a perspex type grout, a combination that's largely still in use today. So the shape of the stem has evolved and we can use cobalt chrome as well as stainless steel, both materials that are very strong, uh, stiff and can be highly polished. But the design uh, principle of the cemented uh, hip replacement is largely unchanged and the, the results of a well cemented hip replacement could arguably be considered the gold standard in hip replacement to compare other results to. See our episode on how long your hip replacement will last. Uncemented implants, on the other hand, rely on bone growing onto and into the surface of the components. So importantly, the stiffness or bendiness of that material needs to be very similar to bone. So for uncemented implants, we commonly use a titanium stem with a titanium shell, both of which have roughened or uh, treated surfaces. And bone loves titanium. So if we wedge in the stem and press fit the cup, then over six to 12 weeks, bone will grow onto and into the roughened surface of the titanium implant. The titanium shell then utilizes a, a liner, which is the moving part against which the head of the stem uh, articulates. And it's this liner that will wear out over time. So it's the crucial part of uh, the hip replacement where designers and manufacturers have focused their attention over the last 15 to 20 years. There's three materials that make a good liner, metal, ceramic, or plastic. And these are used in various combinations. It's a metal head against a metal liner, no longer commonly used as there were problems with reactions to metal debris uh, in a small but unpredictable proportion of patients. Ceramic is hard wearing with a very small risk of fracture or breaking and about a two and a hundred risk of squeaking if using a ceramic head against a ceramic liner, uh, ceramic on ceramic. So the quality of the plastic has markedly improved over the last uh, 15 to 20 years so that we now have highly cross-linked polyethylene at a microscopic level. It's showing virtually nowhere in real patients out to the 10 year mark. And while we don't know how it will perform in reality beyond this point, results look promising. And using a uh, ceramic head against the highly cross-linked plastic has in theory been shown to produce four times less wear. But again, actual results in real patients will take 10 to 20 years to come out and be published. And the same can be said about newer bearing surface materials that are in development and other exciting materials that have quietly revolutionized uh, hip revision surgery over the last 10 to 15 years. So broadly speaking, your hip replacement will be made of a, a stainless steel like cemented stem or a titanium uncemented stem moving against uh, a titanium shell with a plastic or ceramic liner. So you've got metal plastic, metal making up your hip replacement. And if it's been well put in and you look after it, there's no reason why your hip replacement shouldn't last you a lifetime. Thanks for watching.